Hello, this is Lux. And I'm Amber. And this is our thoughts on Miraculous Ladybug Christmas special. So you're skipping over the title of the episode? <laughs> yeah, because different subbers have done it differently. Because mm. some have said Bother Christmas, some said Worst Christmas. But the translation I looked into, Santa Claus is normally known as Father Christmas. So it's like P.L. Noel and Pierre Noel. So it's a pun from father to worse. Hmm. I see how that works. Well, let's get into the episode. Thank you for that explanation, Ember. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I did not expect this episode to be a musical. <laughs> Neither did I. But it was fun for a one-off. And I'm glad for it that it's musical. Because we get to um, listen to Cat Noir sing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I really liked um, Chat Noir's song. The only problem I really had with this episode is it felt rushed, and that was mostly the beginning. It seems they were rushing to get things set up for Adrian, because it seemed to slow down a little bit after that. The overall story slowed down, and it felt like the pacing got better, but at the very beginning, it was kind of quickly, especially with that, even though it was a delightful scene, was at the beginning where they were all singing, and everyone was apparently dropping by to donate for something and they were getting special Christmas things. I need to look into that to see if like it's something specifically over in France or European in nature for Christmas. What? Yule logs? Seriously? Those were Yule logs? I couldn't tell. Yeah, they were Yule logs. The chocolate ones that people do now instead of having an actual piece of wood. Hmm. Not quite sure about that donation thing either. <laughs> yeah, I still couldn't figure out what the donations were for. I do see very clearly that it's for donations but to what cause and why were the cutouts of ladybug and chat noir used in what way did it tie into the donation because i tried pausing to look at the image above the donation box and it kind of looked like a christmas tree and some kids and some presents so i would infer that it's to help needy families hmm also, I think it may have been there as a device later in the episode so Cat Noir could come back to the bakery and grab that cut out of her for the staging at the end of the episode where they needed a fake Ladybug because Ladybug was going to be in the box. Mm -hmm. Also, that box did not look large enough to have her curl up inside of it. Maybe Cat Noir because cats are amazing at changing their size. How yes. are you taking up the entire couch? <laughs> no kidding. And then later, how did you fit in that box? How, 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 it's, it's like a quarter your size. <laughs> yeah, but touching on the pacing, also from what I've read online, there was some talk that the episode was originally supposed to be closer to 40 minutes, but was cut down. So that could be where some of the pacing issues came in because it scaled back supposedly from what they originally had planned. Hmm. Thank you for doing research. <laughs> You're welcome. So hopefully the other two specials will get the full anticipated length. Oh, I didn't know there were more specials. Yes, a Halloween one and a Chinese legend one. Um, at least if the internet's to be trusted. Hmm. And speaking of the fact that these are specials, they seem to have a, either they have a higher budget or we're seeing the animation they're going to be using for next season because it looks a lot better. Yeah, not that season one looked bad, but this is so much better. And the custom expressions in the transformation sequences, such a nice touch. Because normally those are stock footage. Mm -hmm. Because Adrian looked angry because of probably anger disappointment is the particular feeling he was feeling. At the fact that his father couldn't come and help to decorate the tree and do other stuff for Christmas. And Marionette actually had sad and worry on her face when she transformed. Yes, but she also needs to stop jumping to conclusions because... Okay, you see an object that's destroyed by Chat Noir's cataclysm, and you see the card from the gift you gave Adrian, and the only possible explanation is that Chat Noir was protecting Adrian from some akumatized person. Mm. Though the jump in the conclusion I really think of is the fact that she thought Santa Claus was a akumatized person. I'm like, he doesn't look like an akumatized person. They're usually a lot darker colors. <laughs> yeah, he didn't look akumatized at all he wasn't acting akumatized it was a very normal santa claus costume also also i think he was actually santa claus it's kind of heavily implied the whole oh yeah no i'm spending christmas all over paris oh yeah i can come for dinner but i can't really stay because i have a lot to do 
Yeah, they did a really nice job of implying that. It's like, I'm pretty sure Santa Claus just got akumatized. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, really the only thing that was off with the pre-akumatized one was that he had the ponies instead of reindeer. But that's probably easier to get away with on the streets of Paris. Mm -hmm. Also, those kids were mean. Yeah, ridiculously so. Though I do like the fact that Adrian helped him. That was a real nice touch. And that Santa turns around and helps him, goes, hmm, yeah, are you, no, you're not lost, you, you ran off, so, oh, that's what's going on, yeah, and he's having trouble dealing with it, mm-hmm. Okay, well, now that you've had some fresh air, you'd like to go home now, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, I'll take you home. Thank you, sir. <laughs> also, something you brought up outside of the recording, Marinette's hat she made for him, it's awesome, and very well textured and lit in this episode. Yes, it looks amazing. And it looks good on Adrian and St. Nicholas. <laughs> yes, but it seems like it gets destroyed at the end of the episode. Because Chat Noir used the cataclysm on it, and when Ladybug blows on the hat, it disintegrates and reforms into the Akuma. And when we see Santa Claus at the end of the episode, when he shows up at Adrian's house, he's back to wearing his old hat. Hmm. Maybe it was going back to the whole length thing again and it being trimmed and edited. Because sometimes it also gets trimmed and edited near the end where they already have everything rendered and done. And some scenes look odd because they trimmed off a scene before it and didn't bother to retune things. Mm -hmm. Also, how were they able to do that whole setup at the Eiffel Tower? Once you use your Miraculous's special power, usually de-transform within five minutes. And it was established in the Bubbler episode that the magic is Lucky Charm, not Miraculous Ladybug. Because when she made the record to gum up the party, she had to re-transform and feed Tiki. But we're still dealing with the same box all the way through to the end of the episode. There's no way they got all that set up in under five minutes. So did Ladybug have to de-transform, Marionette feed Tiki, and re-transform, and... Did the Lucky Charm item survive all of that? Or did we really accomplish all of this in under five minutes? Yeah, there are some real problems with that. <laughs> but I still like the episode. There were just a lot of nice things. We also get to find out that Marionette's friend apparently has two younger siblings. Yes, because I don't think we knew that before unless Isla kind of mentions it in stormy weather because she's like an expert babysitter and having younger siblings would kind of make her an expert babysitter so i don't know if maybe it was implied in that episode or if she actually said it. it's been too long since i watched stormy weather since you whenever apparently some nitpicks back there any more nitpicks <laughs> plug's song is such a fake out because i mean when he was first after the detransformation he looked so weak i almost thought that he was actually going to be sick like tiki was sick like, no, this is just the usual post the transformation hunger fit. But he's really playing it up. Yeah. <laughs> I also like where he was hiding in the hat. Mm-hmm. And I still love how Adrian really doesn't like that cheese. <laughs> yeah, I've never had it. I don't think I've ever seen it. So apparently it has a strong odor. Mm-hmm. So do you have any more thoughts overall in the episode? Yeah, they got so much mileage out of the Akumatized Santa's song and animation. We got to do that like four times. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting. I think he had a biker theme going on. A little bit with the way the Akumatized ponies slash reindeer looked and kind of the vapor trails from the sleigh. Also, this is the second episode where the akumatization has included an animal that goes along with the person. Because when Jagged Stone was akumatized, Fang was turned into a dragon. And now Santa's ponies were turned into those tricked out reindeer. Also, part of the sleigh got turned into what looked to be handlebars on a motorcycle. They kind of reminded me of a Harley Davidson. Mm hmm So that was interesting. His design was quite enjoyable, though. I'm like, why is he green? <laughs> I was thinking a callback to the Grinch. Hmm. Hmm. Did not think of that. Good one. Nice catch. Well, I don't know how popular the Grinch is in France, but it was the explanation that my brain came up with. Mm hmm So is that moi? Which now is kind of a stupid question because he is more. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I really liked at the end how Adrian's father let everyone into the house for the special Christmas dinner. God, what's the French word for it? Uh, Le Réveillon? Something like that. Well, I was trying to figure out the donation thing, so I was looking at French Christmas traditions. Ah. So apparently that's usually a very fancy dinner that takes hours and hours and hours. You're sitting there and you're having all this wonderful, rich, fancy food. So the impressive part would be that there was actually that much prepared in the kitchen to feed everyone. Because mm. the planned dinner would have just been the household. Hmm. Good point there. Hmm. Maybe they always make extra, extra, and use the extra over the weaker thing to make good use out of how much money they spent on supplies and stuff like that. Hard to say, and Adrian's father could have sent some of the staff out real quick to go get some extra stuff. That too, and everyone else could have also brought stuff too. Mm -hmm. Also, Adrian's father um, showed some nice facial emotions in this episode. He's still mostly stoic, but there were points where you could see sadness in his eyes and him actually missing his wife. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to have something from him either than his usual deadpan or his commanding tone. Mm -hmm. There's also the moment when he walks in and thinks Adrian's there and then realizes he's gone and the window's open. He shows yeah. genuine shock there and worry. Yeah. I mean, I know Adrian was upset, but come on. Those are your superhero powers. Yeah, but... I could understand going out and running around, but summoning the cataclysm was a bit over the top. But it just shows how upset he was. And it was his memory of his mother that stops him from destroying that entire tree. <laughs> mm -hmm. So instead he takes out that fixture that had a picture of himself on it. Hmm, that's self-destructive mm -hmm. in a whole different way. It do happen that he used some slight symbolism in this show. Mm -hmm. So I think that wraps up everything. We should go into our final thoughts. Yeah, because this is a single episode and we shouldn't make it too long. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Was nicely surprised by the musical aspect. My favorite song had to be the one where Cat Noir was running running over the rooftops and seeing out how he's a lonely cat and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It was slightly reminiscent of uh, Black Cats of the Eve, the Vocaloid song with uh, Lynn and Wren. They talk about, you know, how they're just black cats running around and they don't really parallel well. It just came to mind because, you know, they're lonely and sad and things didn't go right. So? What are your final thoughts on this episode? Definitely enjoyed it. It did feel rushed. The pacing was a bit off. It was a little easier to forgive that since it was a musical. So to me, that makes its uh, canonicity a little suspect. Because in the normal scheme of things, people don't run around singing like that. Except it might work. But everywhere else, a very enjoyable, nice upgrade on the animation, facial expressions, transformations. Um, sequences that were reused, it felt like they were reused well, specifically talking about our akumatized Santa. Nice resolution. Overall, very positive. Well, this has been our thoughts on Miraculous, The Adventures of Ladybug and Cat Noir Christmas Special. If you enjoyed this, please click the subscribe button. If you want to see more of Lux's art, you can find it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, and Twitter. Would you like to help support Lux? He has a Patreon and a coffee account. He also does commissions. See links below and to check for commission availability.